Speaker of the People's Assembly receives the Australian delegation of solidarity with Syria and stresses the importance of the role of intellectuals and mass media in exposing the dangers of terrorism. And the Minister of Health, Health says the Ministry continues to offer its medical services despite challenges and work continues to repay the damaged hospitals. And the Syrian Arab army continues to chase terrorists and kills several of them, including Saudis, Jordanians, Egyptians and Pakistanis. The Minister of Social Affairs says the government is keen to deliver humanitarian assistance to all the needy people throughout the country. Good afternoon, this is News in English from the Syrian Arab Television in Damascus. The leader of the opposition Turkish People's Party stressed, Kamal, uh, Kamal Uglu, asserted that Erdogan is no longer able to rule Turkey after the scandal of financial corruption involving ministers and bureaucrats close to him. The Turkish police used force again to disperse a large demonstration in Istanbul calling for the resignation of Erdogan's government. Dozens of people were detained in investigations of corruption, including the sons of ministers. The police used ca water cannons and tear gas against the demonstrators. The major case of investigation started a week ago. The Minister of Oil, Suleiman Abbas, said that terrorist gangs fired mortar shells on a petrol tank in the area of Adra in Damascus countryside. A fire raged in one of the tanks and heavy smoke began to rise and can be seen from miles. In confronting terrorists, a Syrian Arab army unit destroyed a hideout in the farms of al hijriya in Damascus countryside, killing 20 terrorists. The army also destroyed a hideout near the municipality in Duma, killing dozens of terrorists and destroying a pickup full of weapons and ammunition in Halasta. The army also defeated terrorist gangs in Jobar, killing several of them, including two Saudis. Other terrorists were killed in clashes with the army in Daraya, including Egyptian, Jordanian and Saudi terrorists. A Syrian Arab Army unit eliminated terrorist groups affiliated to Jabhat al-Nusra and the so-called Ahrar al-Sham in Latakia's northern countryside, including Saudi, Pakistanis and Jordanian terrorists. In the village of Adara, a number of terrorists were eliminated and cars equipped with heavy machine guns were destroyed. Among the dead terrorists was a Saudi nicknamed Abu Jafar al-Tal, who led a group from Jabhat al-Nusra along with leaders of groups from Ahrar al-Sham with the nicknames Abu Ahmad al-Shami, Abu Qutayb al-Humsi, Abu Qulayb al-Humsi. In the village of Al-Farz al atera and Darwin, a number of terrorists including Muhammad Sakr, Muhammad Hammu, Omar Ahmad al-Mamu and Ahmad Rashid al-Safarani were eliminated in addition to destroying trucks loaded with weapons and ammunition, grad rockets and cars equipped with heavy machine guns. In the village of Selma, an army unit eliminated a terrorist group consisting mostly of Pakistanis and destroyed a cache of explosive devices, while another unit prevented terrorists from sneaking from al Miye village towards Wadi al Khain village, killing a number of them including Ali Darwish and Jamal Hassan. In Homs, a unit of the Syrian Arab Army attacked terrorist groups in the area of al -Rastan. The army also killed dozens of terrorists in the quarter of al qasur in the city of Homs. A military source said that units of the armed forces defeated armed terrorist gangs in several villages in the northern countryside in Talbisi. The source added that the army foiled the terrorist attempt to infiltrate from al ghajr village into the village of Um Shashur in the countryside. 
The Speaker of the People's Assembly, Muhammad Jihad al asserted to an Australian delegation that there should be a real international will to fight terrorism, particularly since Syria is being targeted by terrorist crimes committed by fanatic extremists against Syria's media and economy. The terrorists are murdering innocent civilian citizens. More about that in the following. The Australian delegation from Hands of Syria movement came to show solidarity with Syria. It included a group of experts, academics and Australian activists, led by Professor Tim Anderson. Mr. al stressed the necessity of exposing those who support terrorism, including Saudi regime, which is trying to spread extremists Wahhabi thought around the world, and calling for bloodshed through false fatwas. Mr. al pointed out that the plotters against Syria imposed a savage economic siege, harming the daily life of the Syrian people. He said that the Western countries, which supported the UN Security Council Resolution No. 1373 of 2001, are supporting terrorists and turning a blind eye to the Saudi regime role in financing and training these mercenaries. Professor Anderson pointed out that the visit of the Australian delegation was aimed at observing the truth and the facts about the situation in Syria and to know who supports the terrorist gangs and whether these gangs involved Australian citizens. The Minister of Health, Dr. Sadin Nayef, received the Australian delegation and called for a general movement in the international area to lift the siege on Syria and to force the supporters of terrorism to stop targeting medical institutions, convoys and ambulance vehicles. The Minister of Religious Endowment, Dr. Mohammed Abdel Sattar Sayyid, told the Australian delegation that Syria was targeted by savage criminals and fanatics. The General Mufti of the Republic, Dr. Ahmed Badreddin Hassoun, told the delegation that Syria was the cradle of civilization and the starting point of the spread of divine religions throughout the world. The delegation expressed support for Syria and determination to defend it against the war waged on it. They expressed appreciation of the peaceful religion's coexistence in Syria. The British paper The Independent published a report asserting that the British Interior Secretary Theresa May secretly prevents British citizens to go to fight in Syria from returning to Britain through depriving them of their British nationality. The paper added that the minister deprived 37 British citizens of their nationality since 2010. The paper asserted that increasing numbers of British youth are losing their nationality as a result of their involvement in the fighting side by side by the terrorists in Syria. Christmas prayers are held in Syria asking for peace, love and tolerance. More in the following. Despite the fact that the war on Syria is casting heavily on all the Syrians, the church's bells do ring across the country to dissipate the heavy black clouds. And the songs of love and peace are heard from inside the churches ahead of Christmas. On Christmas this year, the streets of Damascus have been almost void of any features of celebrations. Preparations for Christmas were limited to prayers and calls for peace to prevail in Syria and for all the abducted persons to return to their families and also for resting peace for the souls of those who had sacrificed themselves for the sake of their country. As the terrorism struck, threatening to displace thousands of people, including Christians, driving them away from Syria, and to destroy a civilization that dates back to more than 7,000 years ago, Syrians remained steadfast, believing that victory is very, very near, thanks to their inner strength and to the courage and valiance of the Syrian Arab army. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, www.syriaonline.swear. Now to the latest in the world of business and market news with Vani Kunjian, but after a short break. Good afternoon. The Minister of Social Affairs, Dr. Kindal Shamat, stressed that the relief aids provided by the European campaign is a significant stand with the Syrian people. 
During her meeting with the organizers of the campaign, the minister pointed out that the Syrian government is keen to deliver this humanitarian aid to the people in need in cooperation with the Syrian Red Crescent and other organizations. More than 300 billion Syrian pounds are estimated by the Ministry of Industry as direct and indirect damages caused by terrorism. The private sector's damages are estimated at 230 billion Syrian pounds and the public sectors are at 100 billion Syrian pounds. However, the ministry called on all its affiliates to continue com implementing the project. The economist Iyad Anis Mohammed emphasized that the foreign trade minister's decision to establish a center for foreign trade is considered a major step for developing the sector and directing it into the best economic performance as a way to deal with the international changes. The manager of the Industrial Bank asserted that the bank is getting ready for the reconstruction phase, pointing out that there were some tangible steps, such as training the staff. The bank is to witness progress in liquidity through deposits and is holding training programs and workshops of financial analysis and communication skills on a weekly basis. With this to conclude our news, thank you for watching and goodbye.